Welcome to Sasquatch Island. My name is Tom Seawood. I'll be your host and Indian guide with Monster X Radio's podcast, Sasquatch Island, that I host. And what today, the subject of this podcast is Sasquatch, best evidence, question mark. So the best video that we have out there of Sasquatch, bar none as far as I'm concerned, is Bob Gimlin and Roger Patterson's Patty, 1967, Bluff Creek, California, we all know that one. It's been stabilized, enhanced, and it's a boomer. And to me, from British Columbia coastal region, the Sasquatches that I have seen, I've seen males mainly, and without a doubt exactly what uh, they filmed there in Bluff Creek. So that, to me, is the Sasquatch best evidence out there right now, that video. But aside from that, I've been watching the posts coming up on social media and all of the Sasquatch Bigfoot groups in the last couple of weeks. And that question has been tossed out, I guess it's the subject of the month, I guess you could say. And people are asking, what is the best evidence we have pertaining to Sasquatch? And of course, you know, they're coming in with Bob Gimlin, Roger Patterson, number one. And then they talk about uh, the Freeman footage. And even though it's crispy and clear, a lot of people don't comment on the uh, Independence Bay f coverage of that mother Sasquatch running and then disappearing behind a rock and then coming up and looking, going down again. And then she comes up with her baby in her arm and off she goes to the left of the screen and they even have a back shot of her as it's uh, fleeing with its baby. I think that's some pretty good video image as well. And then we hear the stories and accounts of all the popular sightings. Uh, Robert Osterman, when he was taken in Toba Inlet, Butte Inlet, British Columbia, in a sleeping bag, carried off to a family of Sasquatches high in the mountains, and Ape Canyon, and then other names that, you know, I just can't bounce off right now. But, you know, we hear them all and reading it. But reading the different posts and the comment threads that have been coming out I'm very disappointed because what is the best evidence we have of Sasquatch in North America to date no one says the North American Indians their accounts their carvings their art their songs their crests their regalia of masks and the outfits called regalia that come to life and dance and song in our ceremonial big houses and it's very disappointing because we're shoved aside, we're forgotten about, we're not included. And I don't want to get into the reasons why or anything other than the fact that people are overlooking the North American Indians accounts of Sasquatch. A lot of people have been following me with my Facebook group, Sasquatch Island. A lot of you now follow me with uh, Monster X Radio. I'm one of the three team members and we've now started our new free service and new website and we're on Podbeam, we're doing video casts on YouTube and you know we hear all the stories there and uh, that I've been sharing and the pictures as well on Sasquatch Island that here in the Pacific Northwest I'm in Kent Washington right now but one can drive into Seattle go to the Seattle Art Museum the Burt Museum at the University of Washington the different native galleries that sell art downtown around Pioneer Square, there's three of them. And you'll see the depictions of the Pacific Northwest, different tribal interpretations of their Sasquatch, be it Chunohua from the Kwakwakiwak people from Northern Vancouver Island, which I'm a member of that tribe and our art is pretty much all over the place, especially in Seattle. You can go into the Seattle Art Museum and see these two big interior house posts from a traditional big house from Northern Vancouver Island from back in the late 1800s, early 1900s. And there's Jonah carved at the base of each one of those posts. And the masks that are in there of Jonah and the Burt Museum, they have everything from a stone that's carved of a Sasquatch from somewhere up the Columbia River, I believe. And then the masks and the feast dishes. You go to Vancouver, British Columbia, and you go to the Museum of Anthropology at the University of British Columbia, 
And as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the greatest collections of traditional Sasquatch interpretive carvings from the coastal First Nations of British Columbia. And it's amazing. You can see Chonoha masks when you first walk in in the main gallery that are almost five feet high and four and a half feet wide. Just massive masks, two of them that were carved of Chonoha. And behind it is a huge fish dish, which has to be at least eight feet long and three feet wide and two feet deep. And it's carved of two Jonahas looking at one another. And I believe there's another Jonahua fish dish there as well, if my memory is crisp enough. And then you get across to Victoria and you go to the Royal British Columbia Museum and the Native Art Galleries downtown. And there's all kinds of depictions of Jonahua, even in the main grounds of Victoria. There's a ceremonial big house there with a huge Yagi sea monster design across the front. But there's a pole in front of it and at the base is a female Chonahua holding in its arms, cradling its young baby. And in that museum, you know, just can't even list how many Chonahua masks are in there and ladles and feast dishes and daggers and slave killers and the list goes on. And as you drive up Vancouver Island to the north, and you go to those places like Campbell River, Duncan, Alert Bay, Port Hardy, Chachis, Fort Rupert, just south of Port Hardy, you'll see many more poles and carvings depicting Sasquatch in our language, Chonahua. But if you go into the family's houses and you're invited in and you ask them to sh see their regalia they might show it to you you'll see art on their walls on their shelves dust collectors that are all depicting the sasquatch the jonahua and that's like that throughout all of coastal british columbia even when you get to haida Gwaii, which used to be called the queen charlotte islands the homelands of the haida people they refer to their sasquatch as gogeet the new halt the bella Coola, in the bella Coola valley at the head of the inlet and then there's the Nishka that live in northeast, northern British Columbia, the Shimshan, the Hiltsuk, the Hesla, the list goes on. They all have to, depictions of their Sasquatch. And then you talk to the native people throughout North America. Every tribe has a name for their Sasquatch. They also have stories about it. They have beliefs and perspectives. And the first explorers that came to North America, you have to remember the first person who came, I think was Leif Erikson in 980, B, um, 980 AD. And he talks about the big hairy ones that he saw. And he was interacting with the native peoples. And, you know, they, he heard the stories about the big hairy ones. So the first explorer to North America on the east, Leif Erikson, Lewis and Clark, who came across the continent, uh, other explorers and pioneers, the list goes on. Even Teddy Roosevelt, the pri president, had a story about uh, Sasquatch killing one of one one of two trappers. And it's just always been like that. Always been. You hear the stories and accounts of the non-Indians, and just a touch on the Indian side. Now, I'm not being sour apples here or anything. I'm just saying that I want people to realize that. Open your eyes and ears and your heart and soul. Look down the road to where the Indian Reserve is in your local region where you live. Reach out to the North American Indians that live there or in Canada, the First Nations. Maybe you're up in the northern parts of North America where you have to reach out to the Inuit and the Loot and other tribes that live up there and ask them about their stories. And I know darn well they're going to tell you and share with you. You can look at our ancient rock carvings called petroglyphs. You can look at our ancient rock paintings called pictographs. And we've seen it on social media, on the Bigfoot Sasquatch groups. Depictions of the big fellas, the Sasquatch from those tribal areas that were carved or painted hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. And the stories of the indigenous people in North America, they go back generations, thousands of years, to the dawn of our creation even. And they talk about the Sasquatch. So when we look at what is the best evidence of Sasquatch, well, in Canada, 
under what they call the Delagomuk Supreme Court decision. Oral history from the indigenous peoples of Canada is upheld within all of our courts and laws in our land, in our country. The United States can't say the same, but in Canada they're recognizing the strength, power, and validity of the oral history of the indigenous tribes. So there you go. Some very good evidence is just on word of what they're saying to you. Their family stories, their legends, their beliefs. You know, some of them don't even speak about the other tribe. They won't even, you mention Sasquatch, oh, they button right up. It's in their culture not to talk about it. Bad luck, bad omen might come, bad things might befall you. Or it might entice them to come disturb you at night, which you don't want to have happen. And then other tribes, like the Kwakwakiwak, we openly carve the Jonakwa, jewelry of rings of silver and gold and copper, wood carvings, paintings, masks. You can go to any native art gallery in the Pacific Northwest and you can buy a Jonakwa or a depiction of the little hair-covered creature called the Bakus from the spiritual realm. It's been commodified. It's a dollar figure has been put on the Sasquatch by the Pacific Northwest First Nations. I'm here in Seattle and I've been as far as Oregon and from Oregon right up into Southeast Alaska, our art depictions of Sasquatch are for sale to collectors, even made into mass produced coffee mugs. I have some of those. Keychains, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, he sells a keychain at all the conferences he goes to depicting a welcoming pole in the Kwakwakiwak culture. And it has a Tonakwa, a wild woman of the woods at the bottom. Above it, it has a form that looks like a thunderbird with outstretched arms that is actually the Kulus. And that is a replica of the welcoming pole that one can find at Ariel, Washington, just on the north side of the Columbia River in southern Washington state at the Leluska Foundation, a group of family members that have been adopted into my family in the early 1970s in Alert Bay. And my grandfather, the late Chief James L. Seawood, gave them permission to use all of the crests from our box of treasure, our gildas, as we say. And from that box of treasure, he took the highest ranked one called the Tronacha, and he made that welcoming pole that Dr. Jeff Meldrum sells as a keychain at the conferences that he goes to. But you can also go to the Leluska Foundation when COVID's not on, and you can watch them bring to life the Tronacha dance crest of our family and see the beautiful regalia that they have. <clears throat> so there you go. Something to think about. What is the best Sasquatch evidence we have to date? Well, I personally think it's we indigenous people, the North American Indian, our oral evidence, our evidence depicted in art. Go to Sasquatch Island or email me and I'll be happy. I'm actually going to put it on the write up of this post and it will be as in the slideshow of the uh, uh, video cast I'm doing here, which is actually a podcast. And you go to YouTube, Monster X Radio, and you'll be able to, well, you're listening to it right now. And uh, I'll make sure I have the picture of this wood carved mask. Now it looks really human ape looking. It doesn't have the usual ovoids and split V and split U forms of a traditional Kwakwaki Walk mask and bright colors. It's more natural state colors, has some remnants of hair on it, has a big pronounced <coughs> philtrum area, the distance from the upper lip to the bottom of the nose. It has those small sort of pierogi shaped eyes it has the wrinkles around the eyes and around the mouth you know because they go whoop whoop and that with that big pronounced philtrum and that extended sort of lower jaw the lips are very pronounced when they whoop well that artist from the village of Mimakamlis, my village of the Mamliacha tribe of the Kwakwakiwak at the mouth of Knights Inlet our ancestor apparently went out came back home and took a chunk of wood and started banging away with a hand adds hand chisel started shaping it and then he took hand tools and carved it and sanded it and eventually he finished with that mask and it was brought to life in dance and song and potlatches then a museum collector showed up in the village in the 1880s and purchased it 
and now it sits in the University of British Columbia's Museum of Anthropology. I call that mask Kodak, because back in that era, the only camera was a glass plate, black and white, big, huge, on tripods, you know what type of camera I'm talking about, and it was made by Kodak. Well, my ancestor from my village didn't have a Kodak camera. The only thing he had was a block of wood and some carving tools and memory. But he created perfect image of what our northern Vancouver Island, Mouth of Nights Inlet, Sasquatch male, big one, looks like. Because when I first saw that mask, it, you know, it intrigued me. But when I saw my first Sasquatch and I saw its face, it just like a light bulb went off. I'm like, my God, that's exactly like that mask that I saw in the books. And eventually I would track that mask down to that museum at University of British Columbia. And to me, that was the verification of the existence of Sasquatch back from that time. Because the mask I now call Kodak is exactly what it's supposed to be. A duplicate of what that man saw <coughs> back in the 1800s. So please, you know, keep an open mind. Uh, I've come into the Sasquatch Bigfoot community. And right now I'm doing numerous television productions for different shows, be it a half hour pilot for a series to uh, the possibility of us being picked up by a network here in Canada to air our Sasquatch Island, the other tribe. We've already produced one episode and we have enough stock for probably three episodes and we're going to be filming even more. I'm also filming with Ali Steven, Seasons of the Sasquatch. And that's all going to be about the seasonal, high concentration, easy to access, abundant seasonal proteins that Sasquatch and humans have been harvesting for thousands of years in the Pacific Northwest. Eventually, we may take that afield and go across east of the mountains and into the interior part of the continent and beyond. But we'll see. And I'm also working with my good friend here in the uh, Seattle area, Craig Yanni from Pacific Northwest Sasquatch Research Organization. And we're going to be just doing some filming. I'm, I was teasing him the other day. I said, you'll be Lone Ranger. I'll be Tonto. And we're going to do television shows. Uh, one anyway for uh, the Pacific Northwest region. Because Washington State, it's just overrun with Sasquatch. But it also has a lot of carvings and native and non-native in the museums and in the towns. And God, even a coffee shop is called Bigfoot Java here in the Seattle region. And they have a really cool coffee cup and logo and maybe i'll get some pictures of that for everyone to see but sasquatch is everywhere you know we're eating potato chips right now here in washington state and it's sasquatch brand it's a heavy i guess cooked chip with a infused with a lot of barbecue type flavor and it's a really good potato chip i'll make sure i post a picture on there and we have the olympia olympia beer company they have a sasquatch logo on some of their beer from time to time uh, beer from Canada, Kokanee, with a Sasquatch logo. That's sold here in Washington State. And then there's other, uh, I guess you say, micro brands of beer with Sasquatch or Bigfoot. And you can even go to Walmart, I think, and buy a Bigfoot pizza. So Jack Links can't forget that. So Sasquatch is a big part of the Indian and non-Indian culture of the Pacific Northwest. And as we know, the Pacific Northwest is chock-a-block full of Sasquatches, but so bloody hard to find because our rainforests are so deep and steep. You know, that's the biggest hindrance is, you know, you talk to hunters who go to Africa and hunt the jungle elephant, and they talk to you about how it's the most dangerous animal in Africa because it's always goring with their tusks or beating with their trunk or stomping them with their big feet hunters and locals in Africa because you can't see them in the jungle and as I spoke to one guy who did hunting videos back 25 years ago when I was doing grizzly bear hunting videos he was telling me that oh my god it was so scary this elephant all of a sudden we knew it was there because our bushmen guides were telling us we could smell it and then all of a sudden the jungle erupted leaves and branches and there was a raging screaming elephant and musk right in front of us unfortunately it backed off and disappeared but as as fast as that big animal appeared it disappeared and this is what we have going on in most of north america more so here in the pacific northwest because once you walk into the bush 
the timber on the side of a logging road or any road for that more matter or someone's backyard you get 10 12 feet in that jungle you disappear and that's why it's so hard for us to find the sasquatch but if sasquatch island the facebook group i run with monster x radio monsterxradio.com seasons of the sasquatch and other places i post and the podcasts i'm doing and the television appearances what i'm doing is sharing with you the north american indian perspectives beliefs experiences and other information to hopefully better your game so you can hopefully get that up close encounter with sasquatch with some good video or pictures and now it goes right back to what is the sas the best evidence of sasquatch well north american indians reach out to us you know a lot of people are going to hug indian on you and button up and zip up and say absolutely nothing but others are going to be like me and they're going to want to chatter chatter like a sasquatch and fill you in as much as they can and maybe take you into their indian reservations after COVID and go investigating. And if you want to know more, please do check out everything that I'm doing. And don't forget to chatter chatter like a Sasquatch and hit that share button and tell other people about monsterxradio.com and Sasquatch Island, Tom Seawood, as also my Facebook group, Sasquatch Island and Seasons of the Sasquatch, YouTube and Facebook. And the list goes on, but the best thing is go to Sasquatch Island Facebook group. Everything's posted in there. And Email me. My email is always throughout my posts. If not, tom.seawid at gmail.com. T-O-M dot S-E-W-I-D at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to answer any questions or, you know, give you some advice on different seasonal times to go look for your close encounter of the hairy kind with the other tribe, the humans of the night, Sasquatch. When you're out there investigating, always be safe and always be respectful of Sasquatch. If they bang or throw things at you or bluff charge you, stop, turn around and go back where you came from. Leave them at B. They're just telling you we want our privacy. We're here with our family. We're probably sleeping because it's daytime because we're nocturnal. So give them the respect. And please don't ever think of going out to harvest or hunt them. That is so disrespectful and so wrong. And if you want to get your door slammed in the face by native tribes or individuals, just tell them you want to kill a Sasquatch and you watch how quick you get shunned or exiled from their traditional territories. Because we're pretty adamant when it comes to the other tribe. We're very respectful of them and we hope everyone else is too. Don't forget to go to Sasquatch Island. My YouTube channel is Seasons of the Sasquatch. Monster X Radio, of course. Don't forget to slap that subscribe button, bell, like a rogue Sasquatch slaps a disrespectful Sasquatch investigator upside the head. So there you go. I thank you very much. Don't forget about your North American Indians. They are the best evidence next to the good videos we have. So there you go. I thank you very much in the language of my people. Halakulasla. Go in peace.